It's got the dust on it. You, when you blow it off, it's stuck, you know, you get stopped all up because it's got so much land on it. But anyway, now this the only part that work is the part, or the only part of that book that's going to work for you is the part you read. How many believe that? You know, some people agree with that, some don't. Now, when the blind man, listen to this, the blind man, the man, the blind man made a decision to, uh, he wanted to be healed. Jesus did not make that decision. The blind man did. Guess what Jesus did? He agreed with what he believed. Can you hear me this morning? So I'm asking you to keep an open spirit this morning and believe what God is, is, is doing here and what He's saying. Jesus, Jesus agreed to what He believed. And listen to this. We said this before. God never consults your past to give you a future. Anybody believe that? I, I mean, I don't, my past is made me but I don't want to live in the past. I want to live in the future of God. How about that? Does that make sense? There's a now word for your season. Anybody believe that? We have to know where we have been assigned. Do you know where you've been assigned? Some people don't know they've been assigned anywhere. You're never, it's never going to happen for you because you, you're running from place to place and you're not sitting and getting yourself tied into what God is saying to you. Anybody believe that? Now, since you've been here, how many lives have been changed? How many got a job since you've been here? How many got a place to stay? How about your marriage? Well, we got a few. Thank God. How about that? But listen, 
This is a powerful statement I'm getting ready to make. And, he, and I, I don't, God said this to me. I have to have a clean heart. Yes. Now, everybody going home? You have to have a clean heart before God. Now, you can come before God with a clean heart, He'll change you. But you got to want to change. And you got to try the principles that make it change and makes it work in your life. Now, but you do not want to come before God with empty hands. A lot of people come got a clean heart, but you got empty hands. I'm telling you this morning. God has a place and purpose for everybody in this place to have something that you need for God because He's moving in healing. He's moving in the now of God. He's going to, I'm, I'm not going to get into that unless Him. But anyway, God is moving. Okay? Now, this morning, we got some CDs this morning. We're taking this money, we're putting it in the church. I'm not keeping this money, so if you need a CD, uh, if you don't even like a CD, buy one and then do whatever you feel like you need. <laughs> you can actually take it, buy it, and get down the road and go that one. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Now, we're moving on with that. They're going to come and dance this morning. Now, how do they believe? Wow. We do do reason to shout. Okay. Now stand on your feet right here. We're gonna go in. We're gonna get in the vein of God here. How many got a reason to shout this morning? Yeah. Lift your hands, give God the glory. Yeah. Say, God, I give you the glory, and I got a reason to shout this morning because there's something new happening for me this morning. Okay. Anybody ready this morning? Yeah. Now you need to get your hearts and mind and soul and, and lift it up before the Lord and let God touch you this morning. Yeah. Now I don't have all the answers. You can't get no more country than me. So if some words come out real country, it's country. If you're very eloquent, I'm sorry, I apologize. But that ain't the way I do. Now if you heard this song, we wrote this song a while back, but this is coming out of reaching out. Now this is the word. Here we go. I was headed down. I stood the wrong road. Anybody ever been there?
to sing you a song. See, I want to set a climate and an atmosphere for the, the Holy Spirit to move yes. and be obedient to what He's saying. Okay, can you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. They will come and dance. Hey, we're not, we, we ain't got to rush right out, you know, in 15, 20 minutes. You know, it's not a 15, 20 minute thing. I need more than that. I mean, need a 15 minute God. I don't need that. I need a God that can move. And this song, He talks about it. We sing it a lot of here. But there is an Almighty God, there's a Jehovah God, and that is a Holy God. And I remember telling you, I wrote this song one morning at about 1 30, drinking some Pepsi. And this is what God said. And I wrote it down and we recorded this song. This Almighty God. Sometimes we're confused about our seasons. 
Amen. I mean, believe that. Now they're gonna come. You want to, you ready to come dance? Y'all guys, come on dance. We're gonna just a few minutes. We're gonna turn it over to Pastor Bill. Now welcome them. Put your hands together and welcome them.
You know, I, I hear preachers talk about this all the time because, you know, I've been on television and, I, and I'm sitting there waiting for my turn to go up and, you know, and, and share. And, and I hear pre preachers say, okay, come on, I need you to hook up with me. Come on, hook up with me. Well, how many know that a, a, when a fish gets on the hook, he can wiggle himself off? Right. Come on now. I, so I don't need you to hook up with me. What I want you to do, I want you to plant yourself into the Word with me. Amen. 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 And to the things of the Holy Ghost, because when you plant yourself in, how many know that a tree can't uproot itself? Amen. Come on, a tree can't uproot, unroot itself. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be like trees planted by the water. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to impart yourself into the Word this morning. Don't hear, don't listen to what I got to say, but listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. Amen. And then tonight, those dancers, can you guys do that last song you did? Can you do it again tonight? Yes. Amen. All right. I want you to kick off the service with that, and then we'll turn it over to my daughter and, and, the, and let them worship. But I want you to kick it off tonight. There's something powerful, you know, and I don't want to do this, but there's something anointed and powerful what you guys did. The first song was amazing. Don't get me wrong, but the Holy Ghost did the second song, and I don't know why. We're just going to see what He does tonight. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I encourage you to get people here. How many know that Jesus is the healer? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I mean, listen to me. I'm going to share something with you in just a moment. There's some things I'm, I'm just, I'm, like I said, I'm feeling right now. But Jesus is the healer. How many know that your bank account can be sick? Yeah. How many know your checkbook can be sick? Yeah. How many know Jesus don't want your checkbook sick? Yeah. Come on, how many people know that, you get it, that God doesn't want your children sick? Yeah. Strong out. Yeah. Come on, how many know that marriages can be sick? Yeah. How many know that just because you have a marriage certificate doesn't mean you have a marriage? A piece of paper don't make you say it. How many know that people got a baptism certificate don't make you say it? That's right. That's right. Come on now. I want everybody to put your hand on your head just like this. Because between tonight, this morning and tonight, your man, your mind is going to get you in, in trouble. Amen. All right? So when, they, when the Holy Ghost starts speaking to you through me and it starts messing with your head, just put your hand on your head. I know that you're dealing with it. All right? right. You're laying hands on yourself. You're speaking to your mind. That you, you're not letting your mind mess you up. Because your mind will mess you up. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Amen. I'm telling you, we, listen, we come here to join together, like mind and like spirit and like faith, so the Holy Ghost can have its way. That we're not going to leave here the same way that we came. Amen. And it ain't nobody's fault, listen to me, it is nobody's fault if you leave here the same way that you can. Right. Amen? Amen? So ain't nobody's fault but yourself, so you got to blame yourself. Can't blame Jesus. Can't blame the devil. Come on now. You only, the only person you can blame is yourself because you didn't receive what God had for you. You didn't say it's mine. And so there are going to be times in the service between this morning and night, you're going to say, I'll take that. Come on, you're going to say, I'll take that. And it's mine. Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. You know, listen to me. Let me go and share a little secret with you. You don't have to wait till tonight to get your healing. Right. Yeah. Come on, now the healer's already here. We just have a special service and then a healing service. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach healing like you've never seen it before, and like you've never heard it before, and it's gonna break some religious minds and break some things oh. in you. what you're going to share with them. But we got to take care of some business this morning. Amen? So, and my, listen, my wife's not with me this morning, so I, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't there saying, okay, baby, come on. You know, she normally keeps me straight, and she normally travels with me all the time, but she's in Florida, and she hates it. You know, she hates being in Florida right now, but she, we had to take care of ministry business because we've been on the road so much, and we haven't been home this year. And so she needed to take care of our ministry business. But she said she promised me, next time, if I don't mess things up too much, maybe your pastor will let me come back. <laughs> All right? But next time we come, I promise you that she will be with us when we do a crusade. Because the Fresh Fire Crusades are incredible. And it just does amazing things. I love being a blessing. How many love being a blessing? Yeah. All right? And uh, I don't normally do these things, but I'm going to do them. Because I, like I said, my, my, my uh, queen is not with me. Yeah. My helpmate. <laughs> And um, I just want to be a blessing. I want to give some things away this morning because we do have a CD table, DVDs, books, and everything out there. But uh, this is the first one I want to give away this morning. It's called the Temperature Factor. And uh, our, our costs are extremely cheap. We only pay for the cost of getting uh, making them. We don't make money on this. But, and uh, I give more away than I say most of the time because I want to get the word out there. But if there, most CDs, all singles are like three bucks. And if it's two, it's six. If it's three, then it's nine. You see how it goes, right? <laughs> All right. 
So anyway, this is called the temperature finder. How many know that when you're in a house, that you have you have the ability to change the temperature? Yes, right. yes. How do you do that? You go to the thermostat, right? And you choose which direction you want that thermostat to go into. If you want to cool it off, then you cool it off. You, you, take, you take the button and you bring it down. If you want to heat it up, then you take the button, turn it, or if it's computer, you tap it, or whatever kind of thermostat you have. But you can take the temperature up. Come on now. Well, see, we have that same power. Now, Jesus said in Ephesians, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, come on, lives in us. He says, if it has a name, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, if he has a name, then we have authority over it. Yes. Come on now. So how many know sickness has a name? Yes. How many know attitude has a name? Yes. How many know poverty has a name? Yes. How many know lack has a name? Yes. How many know marriages have a name? Yes. How many know your kids have a name? Yes. Did you know it's the reason why we give people names? That Jesus did it from the very beginning? He didn't say man and woman. He said Adam and Eve. He created man and woman, but he gave them a name so that he would have authority over them. And then he told Adam, he said, listen, I'm bringing all the animals to you so that you can name them. And the reason why he did that so that Adam could have authority over that. Come on now. And so now we give names to our kids so we can have authority over it. And everything in this world that has a name, we have authority over it. Leukemia has a name. Cancer has a name. Come on. Blood disease has a name. Come on. Depression has a name. Oppression has a name. Therefore, we have authority over it. But if you don't know who you are in Christ, you'll never change the temperature in your home and in your house and in your family and in your life. Amen. Come on now. So who wants this? Real quick. First, there you go, brother. So you got to be quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This message is, I did this. This is a DVD so she's already getting it. See? She <laughs> cheat. <laughs> Yeah, this is yours. You, you don't, you, unless you just want to praise the Lord, you can't have it. This is yours, all right? <laughs> and all this is about there tonight. Um, this is called Shout. All right? And I may get into this a little bit tonight, uh, but how many know that you've given a voice for a reason? Yeah. Yeah. It ain't the cups. <laughs> Come on. It ain't the murmur and complaint. Right. You know, that's the language of the devil. Matter of fact, you, you read your Bible in Jude, he says, Jesus is coming back to judge who? Murmurs and complainers. Wow. It's interesting, he said, I'm coming back to judge drug addicts. I'm not coming back to, drug, to judge drug dealers. He said, I'm coming back to judge murmurs and complainers. Because that's where the power is. The power is in your voice. How did heaven and earth get here? Because Jesus said, I mean, God said. And when God said, then it happened. That same power is in us. And the reason why you're not creating things and, and tearing down things is because you ain't saying the right stuff. Come on now. And so this, this DVD is called Shout Out. I did this with Justin DePlanis last year. And it's called Shout. And um, I'll get into it tonight. I'm not going to tell you everything because I may preach this a little bit tonight. But um, anyway, you know there are walls that Satan tries to build up in your life. And the only way to get them down sometimes, it takes a shout. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. And real quickly, uh, this is my new book just came out this year called Who's Your Daddy? And uh, I mean, I wish I had time to preach this this morning, but I don't. And because the Holy Ghost already told me to go in a different direction, but it's called Who's Your Daddy? And real simple, you have to go from God mentality to daddy mentality. Yeah. Satan has a God mentality. How many know that Satan talks to God? Yeah. That's right. Read your Bible. Yeah. How many know that Satan will come to him and say, Father? Mm -hmm. Only Jesus said, Father. Yeah. Come on now. And so we're, he wants to get us in that same, same mentality, in that same understanding, in that same realm. Too many quote-unquote Christians have a God mentality and nothing's changing in their life. Matter of fact, things are getting worse. Because just having a God mentality puts you at the same level as Satan. I told, I'm going to tear some religious mind. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. All right? I tell you what, I, I can't stand a religious spirit. I tell you what now, I, I mean religion, I'm telling you right now, I cannot, I, I, I abhor religion. You know, I, that's nothing but a trick from the enemy, that's, that's a deception from Satan. Satan brought religion, God brought relationship.
glory to God. So you've got to know who your daddy is. If you don't know who your daddy is, then you're going, then you're going to get destroyed. And Satan is going to take advantage of you. Now in Corinthians it says that lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we should not be ignorant of his devices. So that tells me if Satan can get advantage of me, that means I can get the advantage of him. Yeah. Yeah. How many are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yeah. Come on now, how many are sick and tired of Satan taking advantage of you? Yeah. All right, here you go, baby. Amen. Amen. So you got to know who your daddy is. Yeah. All right, that's going to get real quiet in here. Because my next book just came out two weeks ago. You know, when you start talking about money, it gets real quiet. Yeah. <laughs> this is called What's Up With The Tide. Oh, yeah. I travel all over the world. And when I leave here, I go to Florida. When I leave Florida, I go to, uh, I go to Durham, and then I go to uh, England. And no matter where I travel, whether I'm in India, whether I'm in Mexico, whether I'm in Peru, whether I'm in Canada, it don't make no difference where I'm at. Satan is, is, is destroyed tithe in the church yeah. and, made it, and made it a dirty word. Come on. Come on now. Amen. And people say, well, you know, tithing was Old Testament teaching. Mm -hmm. No, you need to read your Bible because if you understand history, Malachi is actually New Testament. Mm -hmm. Man put it in the old, but if you understand the time of history, it was it was actually part of the new. But anyway, we go from Genesis to Revelation. It's a real simple book. Your pastor actually already has this. And um, I encourage each and every member to get a hold of this because it will set you free of your mind on tithes and offerings. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There you go, my brother. All right. God bless you. But anyway, I re and, oh, yes. My wife will make sure I do this. Hey, I'm so ready to preach. <laughs> <laughs> we have, uh, you go back to the table. These are partner. Um, I, I am not big on the talking about partners, but my wife says I got to get better at it. How many know that it takes partners to travel all over the world? Right. Yeah. Pastors will tell you, I didn't charge him one dime to come here. I didn't tell him you need to put me up in a five-star hotel, pick me up at the airport in a limo. Yeah. Come on now, and you got to pay me some amount, certain amount so I'll come preach for you. Come on. Yeah. I never have, and I never will. Yeah. I told the Lord a long time ago, if you don't supply my needs, I won't do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But it does take partners, so I encourage you to go back there and um, get a partner and it tells you if you want to be a, if you want to partner with us. Uh, like I said, that's all I'm gonna get into this morning. Are you ready this morning? Yeah. I'm not gonna beat up here long. Everybody stand to your feet. Because I like being on the floor, but I want to see your faces real quick. I I'll that we can use that for a second. <laughs> I grab my neighbor's hand this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many know what time church starts tonight? I know you ain't used to have a Sunday night service. What time does church start? Well, that's three of you. By the way, church starts at 7 o'clock tonight. All right. Now, if it was up to me, we would just start now and just go on through the night. But I ain't going to do that to you. Because if I was in India, that's what we would do. If I was in another country, that's what we'd do. We'd just start. And sometimes I go six and seven hours and don't break out and sweat. I'm not going to do that to you. All right? We're going to be real quick this morning. I'm going to give you some um, thanks for the Holy Ghost. All right, that person's hand that you're holding on your left, and that person's hand you're holding on your right, let's lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your anointing. Father, thank you for the anointing and power of your Holy Spirit that is in this place this morning. Father, I thank you for the word that is about to be brought forth, that's brought forth with power and unction of the Holy Spirit. Father, that is life-changing. Not one person leave here the same way that they came in Jesus' name. Now, Father, for that person's hand on our left, that person's hand on our right, we lift them up right now. We apply the blood of Jesus over their life. Father, you know what they're going through, what they've gone through, what they're dealing with, and what they're facing. Father, I thank you right now. We're making the rough road smooth right now. Father, I thank you for total deliverance over every single area of their life right now. Right now, Father, I thank you for the miraculous healing power of the Holy Spirit to go into their into their lives, to their families, to their finances, Father, whatever they need. I thank you right now. We tear down that stronghold that's been holding back the mercy and the grace of God, Father. I thank you for the windows of heaven opening upon their life, for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon them right now. Let the Lord, let them feel the anointing right now. Thank you, God. Oh, my God, my God, there it is. Let them feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Father, no, it's not me, but it's you through me right now. Not my words, but your words right now, Father. Penetrate. Penetrate their hearts. Penetrate their hearts right now, Father. 
Because it is your word that molds us and shakes us and, and, and causes us to be free. Yes. Everyone lift your hand right now and shout, I'm free. I'm free. Shout loud, I'm free like you mean it. I'm free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. You hear that, devil? Yes. So my wife say, you hear that, devil? Yes. Take your hands yes. off my stuff. Off my stuff. And give God a shout of praise. Yes. history of time. Before there ever was a great move of God, there was always true repentance. Yes, right. Come on now. We have to get back to true repentance. Yes. As we were praying, I sensed that in my spirit. There's some of you here this morning and you're, you're harboring up old stuff. You're holding on to old stuff and, and hurts and pains and, and what somebody did to you. Honey, let me tell you something. If you're, if you're holding on to that, then you're holding on to the devil. Hallelujah. You're walking around every day holding his hand because you ain't letting go. My God, my God. And you want to know how come things ain't always it seems like it's like a roller coaster. One minute and things are going great, and then you go right back down. And all of a sudden, there's another time you seem like everything's going up, and all of a sudden you go right back down because you keep holding. I'm just telling you from the Holy Ghost, you keep holding on some stuff, and you're holding on to it, and it's like it's like going back to the grave and digging it up, and it's been dead all that time. And, and you want to know how come you stick it up everywhere you go? Come on. Amen. And so we got to listen. We have got to let go of some stuff. I just sense that in my spirit. Some of you this morning, you've just been holding on and, and holding on and, and blaming. And it, 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 it is not man's fault. And I know, I know some of you, and it, I met mean, the two people I just saw in my spirit. And I know that you've been hurting and, and they've done you wrong. But they're not your God. Amen. Amen. They're not Jesus in your life. They're man or woman, and, 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 and that, there's that human nature, and, and you've got to quit focusing on the human side and start focusing on the God side. Yes. If we want to go to a realm and walk in the realm where God wants to have fullness in, his, in your life and, and wants to have freedom in your life, then you've got to, to admit it and quit it and go on. Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying, your whole, it's the, the Bible says it's the little boxes that spoil the vine. And it's those little things that you're holding on to. And, and you, you, you've got this blame game going. And you want to blame. And you're the first thing you want to do is blame this or blame that. And it ain't their fault. Yeah. It's just the devil trying to hold back, doing everything he can to put you in a prison in this life. Some of you have been feeling boxed in. You feel like there's just this wall coming in, and it's almost like spiritual claustrophobia. But I want you to know something today. Everybody say today. today. Those walls are coming down. Walls are I said the walls are coming down. Walls it's gonna be like a man. I'm telling you, tomorrow morning when you get up tomorrow morning, it's gonna be like a, a breath of fresh air. It's a new day dawning. We're going into a new season, a season of victory, a season of being set free, a season of a season of extreme favor. Yeah. Yeah. Enough's enough, devil. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enough's enough. Listen, I'm not even. I'm not challenging your love for God. I don't say you don't love God. I'm not saying you're not in love with God. What I'm challenging you is your flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Has nothing to do. Listen, there's a lot of good people. Dying, going to heaven, distraught, and in pain, and, and, and just and, and being bound up, and they get to heaven, and all of a sudden, Jesus, said, why are you like that? And they said, Well, why are you like me that way? I didn't leave you like you that way. You let yourself get that way. Yes. 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 He said, I took care of it two thousand years ago when I died on the cross, and I went to hell, and I died spiritually and physically. 
believe. He said, but when I rose up, yeah. I brought the keys to the kingdom. I brought you freedom. I brought you salvation. I brought you deliverance. It is, I've already done it. Oh, he's waiting for you is to take that, and you need to take that. Yeah. Oh, glory. Yeah. 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 Devil trying to destroy you. Devil trying to take you out. He's trying to get you discouraged and, and you just and fall down and hurt your leg. And, you know, and it's all it is is a distraction. But it's not the way it's supposed to be. It is not that that is determined by what how you feel like. But it's determined by the presence of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And it stops now. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, it stops now. It's over now. The breakthrough is now. Breakthrough for Kingdom Ministries is now. I'm so tired of Christians living in the past and, and living in a wholesome life. And, and God never intended us to live in a wholesome life and in a past life. But God has intended us to live in the now. Everybody shout the now. Yeah. 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 When we learn to live in the now, that's when breakthrough is every single day of our life. I'm not saying Satan ain't going to come to you, but you have authority to put him in this place. And you definitely won't have my mind. Amen. Amen. The Bible says salvation means this the day of total deliverance. Today. Everybody say today. today. We got to learn how to live in the now. Amen. Hebrews 11 1 is very clear. It just doesn't say faith. No. It doesn't say faith is the sense of things, hope on the evidence of things not seen. What's it? It says now, now. now faith. Mm -hmm. It didn't say tomorrow's faith. It didn't say yesterday's faith. It didn't say last week's faith. Or next year's faith, the next month's faith. No, it says now faith. Because see, that now faith is the God kind of faith. See, that word now in the Webster dictionary means. <laughs> In the time. Everybody say time. time. Now this is really going to mess you up. Now this is what's your dictionary of the, of the definition of now. In the time immediately before the present. <laughs> okay, let me, let me get this straight picture. Please. You said now, we're talking about now. Well, now it's now. See, that's what the devil wants you to think. That's where the world teaches you. We our school system teaches you. Now is now. It's present. But that's really not what the definition of now is. The definition of now is the time immediately before. Amen. See, we're, see, we're not responding. We should be responding Christians. We should be Christians of action. Amen. So we are... Presenting and we're acting before the now. You don't know what I'm saying. When, look, some of y'all. Like, no, no, no. Now I'm going to explain it to you. So just hold on. Just hold on. What I'm saying. Now think about this for a moment. Do you think Jesus and, and God got Jesus and the Holy Spirit together and said, "Hey guys, you know, I, 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 I got this idea because." First of all, we know that Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, come on, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know that, right? And the Bible says that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But let me, we stop right there. And we go on to the next verse, which says, And God said, but we forget that little part that says, but yet the Holy Spirit hovered. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, see, see we, 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 that's why Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor will I ever say this. My Torah disciples is I'm sitting in heaven. I'm leaving a comforter with you. I'm leaving that same comforter that was in the darkness before God even said. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no,
no, no, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. See, see this is gonna be like life when some of you gonna be driving home and be like, oh my god! <laughs> You're like a poor old Sapro guy at birth! <laughs> oh, I get it, I get it! <laughs> See, you, you, you gotta you be ready for the night, because see, this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm caught. <laughs> see, I'm trying to give you the doses, you know what I'm saying? You know, Bob says, taste the season, I'm giving you a little taste of appetizer, so that way you can handle the meal, because you, you really can't handle the meal yet. <laughs> see, I, I gotta break through this stuff. See, I gotta break through some. So now we see, now when we talk about faith, and, and we call ourselves people of faith, and, and, and we'll say, and we'll speak, and we'll be good confessors. And, and how many has ever quoted 1 Peter 2 24? That says this that by Jesus Christ's stripes we were healed. How many has ever quoted it? Yeah. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's some of you. Yeah. How many, it didn't work? Yeah. Come on, don't look at me like that. Tell the truth, Shane, you <laughs> but yeah, we quote scripture. Well, I'm quoting scripture you know, and preachers have said along all along says, man, find the scripture, stand on it. Right. Find me a scripture. Where my Bible? Where my Bible? Here's the word. I'm standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. And as you're singing, you're being defeated. As you're singing, you're going through hell. As you're singing, your mind is wondering, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to pay that? How am I going to get out of this? I wish my husband would just go on and leave me. Yeah. I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. Then you're singing yourself right into depression. You're singing yourself right into defeat. But I'm quoting 1 Peter 2.24 that by His stripes I'm healed. And I'm quoting and I'm quoting it. But yet there's no power. How many of Satan can quote the Bible? It doesn't change his past. It hasn't changed his present. And it sure ain't going to change his future. What's God's word for? God's word for those that believe. Huh? See, there's a difference in quoting 1 Peter 2.24 and saying because quoting, you're coming from a hurt so mentality. But saying, you're coming from a no so. See, because when you say it, there ain't no doubt whatsoever. See, I know what I'm talking about. My dad, well, I mean, I prayed, we had, my dad had a massive stroke five years ago, and the doctor said he wouldn't live, and, and even if he lived, he'd be a vegetable for the rest of his life. My dad's never been sick in a day in his life. He passes the church up there in Hampton, Virginia, and we didn't have time for him. I just brought him out of retirement. He can't go back into retirement. Because yeah. I laugh. <laughs> yeah, you got to preach, you got to get back to work. Nine months after I left, he has a massive stroke. I'm down in Florida. I, I pioneered a Spanish church down in Florida. I'm down there, and I get a phone call at 4.30 in the morning. My brother calls me, and he didn't have anything to do with God. didn't want anything to do with God. And this is somebody that was raised from the dead himself. Oh, my God. See, they tell you, just because God does a miracle in your life don't mean you're going to serve God. That's right. That's right. See, that miracle is not your salvation. That miracle ain't going to keep you in the presence of God. That miracle that you experienced years ago ain't going to carry you the rest of the way, honey. You better do more than just receive a miracle. Because, see, we're not living in the now. We're living in the past. And I would be pressed to say that the majority of the Christians live in the past. They don't live in the future. Then they don't live in the present. Maybe a few, but they all live in the past. And, and what God did for me, what two years ago, what God did for me twenty years ago. Oh, thank God for what He did for me thirty years ago. How about thanking God what He's doing for you right now and what He's about to do in your life? But I came all this way to give you something this morning to change your life, to change your household, to change your situation. Morning, you're not here. You're here for design appointment from the Holy Ghost. 
That's why I had to wait. I had to wait. I had to wait because I'm not just coming up here to preach another message. I can preach another message. I got hundreds and thousands of messages. But I came here to give you a word from heaven this morning. And so, my dad was, had a massive stroke here. We had a decision to make whether we were going to go by the doctor's report. We were going to either confess 1 Peter 2.24 or we're going to say 1 Peter 2.24. Because when I said it, when my brother called me, who wasn't a believer at the time, and he was backslid and living a life of sin, I said, and the first thing that came out of my old God, what are we going to do? That never came out of my mouth. Because you understand, if you're going to live in the now, in the time you meet before the present, whatever comes out of your mouth determines what happens next. That's right. I think I need to say that again. Your first response determines what happens next in your life. Amen. Yes. 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 So I could have gave into the flesh because me and my dad are very close. And I mean, the older we get, the closer we get. And, and, uh, and so I could have said, oh, God, I can't, don't, you can't take, can't take my daddy. God, please don't take my daddy. God, don't take nobody. He don't need another flower in the garden of heaven. Amen. Come on. Amen. See, I, I told you I'm going to mess up. Oh, you, 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 you should see me preach this in the coaching church. <laughs> He don't need another flower. God needs another no, he don't need another flower in his garden. If he wants a flower, he just say flower grow. Amen. The only reason people leave out of here early is because they don't know who they are. Jesus. You, you didn't hear what I'm saying. I told you I'll mess with your head. Yeah. See, because we don't know the power that we have, that we have at our at our, our at our lips, at the, at the tip of our lips, at the tip of our tongue. Now, the reason why things happen is because we sometimes we just can't keep our mouth shut. Huh? The reason why things are just because this, the junk, the poison that comes out of your lips and comes from your tongue is what's destroying your life. And you want to blame everybody else, but you need to check what you've been saying lately. And so, I mean, I could eventually, I mean, immediately I could say, oh God, I, I can't lose my dad. That cannot, that can't happen, brother. I, and my dad's too important to me. I can't allow poison to come out of my mouth. You see me because we look just alike. Yeah. Yeah. Just like he crazy, just like I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chip off the old block. And so when I got the message, the first thing I said, I told my brother, I said, he will live and not die. Yeah. My wife's laying right beside me on the phone right because you know when your phone rings at 4:30 in the morning, you know it ain't good news. Yeah. I said when the phone rings at 4:30 in the morning, ain't somebody calling you want to give you a thousand dollars? Oh, brother, the Lord woke me up at 4 30 morning. I just had to call you. I want to bless you with a thousand dollars. I'll give you a new escalate. That ain't, that ain't happening very often. <laughs> Most times, some of your phone rings at 4 30 morning because somebody wants to give you some bad news. Somebody wants to speak death into your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want to live in the now. And we want to live in the fullness of God. And we want to, and we come to church and we praise God and we jump up and down. And the dances are wonderful and gorgeous and anointed and everything like that. But listen, you can't carry them home with you. I need to carry Pastor CD with you, but you can't carry him. Huh? So you, when you leave here, there's only one person you carry. There's really two things you carry. You either carry the presence of God or the presence of the enemy. You got two choices every, every time you come to church and every time you get up in the morning. Who are you going to walk with today? Amen. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not, listen, I'm not challenging your love for God. I'm not saying you don't love God. But Satan's been taking advantage of you long enough. And I'm here to stop that and to take advantage of him. Bible says we've been destroyed. Hosea 4 6 said we've been destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. You know, there's a saying that says, knowledge is power. Somebody's never heard that phrase. Right? You know that's a lie, right? <laughs> knowledge ain't power. It's the use of it. Amen. 
disciple right? You can have a house with a security code on it. And you can have the knowledge of that code. But unless you use it, that's right. That's all I'm saying. You know, my, my dad, my mom and dad have a nice home on the, on the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia. And uh, I mean, when I go there, not only do I have a key to the house, and the key is great. The key gets me in the house. But unless I know the code, I'm going to get locked up. <laughs> Especially if they ain't home. And if the Lord's on me, they ain't home. And my name could be his name. And I can show my ID. But if my security code number don't match up. I'm in the family. I love my daddy. But them police officers don't care how much I love my daddy. Satan don't care how much you love God, honey. He don't care that you know the address. What he cares about if you don't have the code and use the code, honey, the alarm is going to go off and every demon in hell is coming against you. Well, I had a choice when I got that phone call. I can either live in the now of a miracle or I can live in the now of a death. See, it was my choice. I chose. Because the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. You choose. But I'm just preaching the word. I'm just giving you scripture. This is not thus said Phil. This is thus said the Lord. Yeah. I'm just saying what the Bible says. And so when he called, and I said, my, told my brother, I said, now brother, you know, because see what you don't understand, I back up just for a minute. When the Lord told me to leave the church, he said, I want you to go, turn it back over to your dad. I want you to go down in, in Pioneer Church down in South Florida. And I'm thinking, really? I just built my dream home? On the golf course. I can walk out my back door and tell me anytime I want it. Get in my pool. Oh, it's wonderful. Lived in a two and a half year. I was only in it two years when the Lord said, okay, you gotta go. Seriously. <laughs> my wife said, seriously. He said, yeah. I'm taking you out. I'm taking you out. But he said this, he said, if you will do what I tell you to do, he said, I'll raise your brother up. Oh, see, you're, see, we get, we, see, we don't, you don't understand. See, your obedience, your yes, Lord, now. Oh. Huh? Your, see, your yes, Lord, right now, sets in motion of stuff that's going to happen weeks down the road, months down the road, years down the road. But it's because of your nose, huh, it's causing stuff to happen yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and next week, and next month. See, you're either your nose going to determine what happens next, or your yes. Amen. Amen. And so when they called it, my brother called and said, you'll live and not die. My wife got on the phone and, and I called, you, 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 you need to have faith friends. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a difference in a, in a friend and a faith friend. A friend will pat you on the back at a hospital and say, oh baby, I know how you feel. It's okay. It's all right. I'm there for you, sure. I'm there. No, that ain't a faith friend. A faith friend says, in the name of Jesus, you, it's time for you to get out of this bed, get out of this mentality. Come on, come on. We need to apply the word right now. I'm going to pray right now. We're going to apply the blood of Jesus. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus right now. You're not going to stay this way. Come on, you're not going to feel sorry for yourself because feeling sorry is only going to make things worse. No, you're going to come on, put a smile on your face. Well, uh, stop that. I know you in pain, but we're, we're, we live a life of faith. We're going to live in the now. We're not living in the past. We're not living in the future. We're going to live in the now. So in the now, you're healed. And feeling sorry for me and feeding the devil. Amen. I want somebody to come to me with boldness in the Holy Ghost and with the love of God and say, You don't have to be that way, my brother. You don't have to stay that way because I know the Redeemer lives. I know who the Savior is and I know who the healer is. And that same healer is in you. And so we're just going to live in the now. We're not going to get the devil to worry about what happened yesterday and next week. We're going to live in now and you are going to walk in healing right now. I don't care what the report is. I don't care what it looks like on the on the x-rays and in the MRIs. I know 
know what the word says. And the word says, I'm healed. The word says, I'm free. More than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, who always causes me to triumph over every single area of my life. Come on, somebody. Help me preach this thing. and make you feel good. I want to make you feel right and live right. And so you don't have to have devils taking advantage of you no more. Glory. Is this all right? I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not going too far. Am I? I'm all right. It won't matter right now anyway. I'm already gone now. Minutes, I may get so drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Matter of fact, some of you need to start drinking in the Holy Ghost. Some of you have been sober too long. Oh, but you can go out there and take your little glass of wine and get your little wine coolers and, and have a beer on Memorial Day and think you all right, honey. That's all you do is feed into the enemy. I better not preach that too much, Pastor. Oh, yeah. You need to have folks here in the church. <laughs> 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 now listen to me. Look, look, I didn't say you can't go to heaven with a beer, drinking a beer. But I will tell you this. My anointing, personally, my anointing and my gift that God has put in me, because the Bible says all have been given gifts. Right. Huh? And all have been given a measure of faith. It's me personally, Pastor. My anointing is more valuable, more precious than to err on the other side. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you. It's like folks say, well, can you, can, you, can you smoke and go to heaven? Sure you can. You just got to go to hell to get a light.
Lord Jesus. When we understand this, listen, because when I got that phone call, I had to make a choice. Life and death is in the power of tongue. What I, what I said, tell me what happens next. I said, my daddy will live and not die. And after I said that, after I said that, after I said that, one hour later, the doctor said he would, live, he would die. I, I just said he'll live and not die, but yet the doctor said he'll die. Then, then they sent him to another hospital and they said, well, if he lives, he'll be a vegetable for the rest of his life. And I already said again, my daddy will live and not die. Yeah. But yet the doctor said, no, he's going to die. We can't do anything for him. It's over. Just go on and start preparing. I'm not preparing for death. Amen. I've always been prepared for life. Amen. Amen. They sent him to two other hospitals and finally they said, we can't do anything for him. We're going to send him to, to uh, DePaul Hospital in uh, Virginia Beach. And, and said, I'm gonna, do you really want to know how much God loves you? I'm going to tell you. Because you know God is no respecter person. Okay, just a week prior to my dad getting there, they just finished a whole wing. Y'all know what a wing is. I'm not talking about chicken wing. A whole wing. That means they put a whole new addition at a hospital at DePaul specifically for stroke victims. Look, if God, God's in a creating business. If he has to create a hospital for you, honey, he'll create a hospital for you. Now, I'm not against doctors. You know what I'm saying? I'm just against what comes out of their mouth sometimes. Come on. And I have to tell them, look, I've had to tell them, don't let that come out of your mouth. And they think I'm in denial. I say, no, 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 no. Don't. I don't care what you say outside this room, but in this room, I said, there will be no negative thoughts and there will be no negative words. You're not going to tell me my daddy ain't going to live another night. That's, that's not an option. So they took him to the Paul Hospital and they get him there. And, and, and in, the, in the meantime, I'm flying. I'm already on a plane. I'm flying to Norfolk, Virginia. And when I got the phone call at 4.30, by 10.30 that morning, I was already on the ground, boots on the ground. You know what I mean by boots on the ground? If you ain't anything about military, you know when you put boots on the ground, you mean business. You know what I'm saying? I didn't send no, no drone. You know what I'm saying? I put boots on the ground because I'm going to be there and I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to be the one of the ones that's going to defeat the enemy. I'm going to go head to head and I know because when I go head to head, I know already who's going to win, honey. He can't beat me. He can try. He may get a few licks in here and there, but honey, the final outcome is he's hollering mercy when I get done with him. Amen. So you get to have that mentality. Oh, you believe me? You better not say that the devil can hear you. I want him to hear me. Right. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Honey, let me tell you something. The reason why you're in it because you ain't saying enough. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yeah, we want to live in the now. And the time immediately before the present. So what I said, my dad was living, I died. I wasn't living in the future. I'm living in the pre-faith realm. I'm living in the realm that God lives in. He exists in the prefect. You ain't hear what I'm saying. Yes. Tell me y'all like Now listen to me. Do you think when God got Jesus and the Holy Spirit together, and, and do you think he got them up, he said, guys, I got a question for you. Do you think if I say, you know, because I don't like darkness and I don't like chaos, because one translation it was chaotic. Not just dark, but it was chaotic. I like some of your lives sometimes. Huh? And it looks like chaos, and, and you know, kids ain't living right, and the job looks like it's going crazy. You may have gotten laid off, and, and the money ain't coming in like it's supposed to, and you've been paying your tithes and giving your offerings, and, 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 and you don't understand why it ain't working because most of the time you ain't let it go, you took it back home with you. Yeah. 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 See, it's kind of like coming up to church and come and get a healing, get a joint of a boy. And then you pick that thing up and say, Come on, let's go home. They're leaving it right here at the altar. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you tonight, oh my God. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm going to rock your world tonight. I'm, it's going to be so simple. You're going to, you're going to walk out of here on cloud nine. Like you, some of y'all ain't going to drive home. You better float home. <laughs> some of y'all may get pulled over. 
because he's gonna pull you off a drink and drive. <laughs> We've had that happen, Pastor. They pulled folks over because they thought they were drinking and driving. My daddy was one of them. We were in a meeting, and my daddy got so drunk in the Holy Ghost, and he driving home, I would drive back to the hotel in Oklahoma, and the cops pulled him over because he was swerving just a little bit, and so they pulled him over, and they went and said, I'm stopping you for a DUI, and when my dad rolled down the window, the Holy Ghost hit the, the police Ooh. officer. Oh. I had to pull up, seriously, in an IHOP parking lot. After a service one night, and we went to IHOP, and, and several people, they said, well, where y'all going? I was like, well, we're going to go to IHOP. I said, well, we ain't going to go too, because we, we, we still feeling it. We want more of it. We want to be in that atmosphere. So they all came to IHOP. We got out, we didn't got into IHOP. We just out in the parking lot. The Holy Ghost is hitting folks out, people jumping and shouting in the parking lot. And, they, and so IHOP calls the police. <laughs> Thank you for having, for drinking in the parking lot. Cops pulled up. Pull up, roll the wind when they roll, they roll, they hit the, I guess they hit the button, I roll, I'm dating myself, but they push the button. <laughs> roll the windows down, and look, it said, never mind, and boom, pulled out of the park. <laughs> That's living in the now. Yeah. Come on now. Right. So they built this wing one week before my dad, see if I get They built this wing on in the hospital, one week before my dad got there, and then the night before, they had hired the, lead, the world's leading neurologist who oversaw the, the project. And he flew in to be there full time and right before midnight that night. Well, my dad arrives there at about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Actually, he went through, I'm oh, sorry, that was the second hospital. Then when he got to Nepal, it was like 9 o'clock in the morning by the time he got in there. He went three different places. Now all this time the enemy's working and he's getting worse, he's not getting better and he can't move and he can't punch and he can't respond and, and my dad's never been sick a day in his life and, and he's just a vegetable laying there. But you know what my dad said? He said the whole time, he said he couldn't say anything in English, but he heard his spirit pray. So that's why you better know who you are. And better be filled with the Holy Ghost because the, the Holy Spirit was praying on his behalf. Sometimes you've got to have the Holy Spirit praying on your behalf. And so they brought him, they took him there to the hospital. They took him to the hospital and, and um, they wooed him into the emergency room. And I couldn't get there in time for them to roll him into the emergency room. And I get there as they, they just passed through the doors. They wouldn't let me back there, but I'm slinging blood. I mean, I'm just applying the blood of Jesus. If you know anything about the blood, and next time I'll have to talk about it, but we'll just, I mean, I'm just slinging blood, and blood of Jesus is going everywhere. But I figured if we got Jesus out of hell, we could get, we could get my dad out of a stroke. Right, man. Right. Yeah. I said, if we got Jesus out of hell, Man, I wish I had time. Yeah, yeah. It was good enough for my dad to get him out of his stroke. Yeah. And so I got there, and then so all of a sudden, about I've been there about 45 minutes, and the doctor comes out, and he's just, just shaking his head. And I don't understand what? He said, I just don't understand. He said, you know, because they were, they were experiencing with new procedures, and, and they did this one, they got ready to do this procedure, and they got halfway through it, and, and they got his brain on monitors on those flat screens all around, and they could see where the, where the, um, the tumor and the, 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 the clot they had released out of his heart into his brain, and it was about the size of a, of a quarter, and they said by the time they got to get ready to get to, into his brain, that they had to stop, because the doctor said, stop, wait a minute, and they're looking at it, and all of a sudden that, that, that tumor and that clot began to just rock back and forth. And all of a sudden that thing went pow. Wow. Just, I mean, documented at the Paul Hospital in Virginia Beach, Virginia, totally disappeared. Amen. Just like that. At that moment, the doctor looked at my dad and I turned around and looked at, my, at the doctor and the doctor said, uh, Mr. Privet. My dad looked around and said, Yes. He said, Can you raise your hand? And my dad said, you mean like this? And he was paralyzed. <laughs> paralyzed. Dying. Death warmed over. But what comes out of our mouth determines what happens next. Because see, if we want to live in the now, we want to live in the God realm. 
who our daddy is. That's why you gotta know who your daddy is. See, you, if you want to exist in walking in a miraculous life and living a, a, a fulfilled life the way God intended God kind of life, then you have to live in the realm that He lives in. See, He lives in the now. Because when God said <laughs> light, that light did not hesitate. Are you listening to me? Because see, this is what happened. When the Bible says, you go back to Scripture, verse, verse 3, or in, actually in verse 3, verse 3, it says, and the Holy Spirit hovered in the middle of that darkness, in the middle of that chaos. See, it doesn't matter how, how bad your life looks like and, and how bad the situation looks like. It may look like it's dark. It may look like it's chaotic. But if you're born again, child of God, the Holy Spirit's hovering. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're alone and you think you know that, that, that God has forsaken you and, and you don't understand why you're going through this? But honey, I gotta tell you something. The Holy Spirit is hovering, but he can't do anything until you say something. Oh, yeah. But you gotta have but you gotta be living in God's kind of life. You gotta be living in that realm. You just can't be just some Christian just living like the devil on Monday and want to live like God on Sunday and expect you when you say something, something's gonna happen. No, 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 no. Because you're not speaking from the God kind of voice, you're speaking from Satan's voice. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why that's why Paul said, see, Paul understood this. Paul had a revelation of this. That's why Paul said in the news, he said, I die daily. Yes. That's right. See, you, you understand? That's right. He, he said, I repent. It's almost like getting saved all over again. <laughs> he, says, uh, he says, I'm not going to let the devil take advantage of me, so I'm not going to have my flesh take it. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not going to let my flesh take advantage of me. So Paul said, I die daily. In other words, before his feet hit the ground, before boots hit the ground, there's no one day that goes by before I, when I get up, before I get out of bed, I do not repent and say, God, if there's anything in my life, I don't want it in there. Take it out because I want to move of the Holy Ghost. I want to walk with signs and wonders. And I want to know that every place my feet is, is my territory. So Satan, take your hands off my stuff. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Stand to your feet this morning. Come on, we'll pick it up here tonight. Come on, stand to your feet and give God a shot of praise. For you guys and actually give it to everywhere I go. He said, and back in November when I was praying, he always gives me a word for the year. And in 2017, as it was coming up, he gave me this word. And he said that 2017 would be a year of overcoming. Yes. So he took me to the word and he began to share with me and he began to take me to Genesis and where Noah began to build the ark. And God told him to build the ark. Noah didn't have any blueprints. He didn't know what a boat was. There had never been rain. He didn't know what rain was. But he knew the voice of the Father. Oh, my, 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 my. I said he knew the voice of the Father. He knew God's voice. And, and not, he didn't have religion. He didn't buy religion. He had a relationship. Oh, come on, somebody. See, when you have a relationship with God, He'll give you the blueprint for the day. Oh! See, we, we're trying to do this thing on our own, and, and we get up in the morning and say, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do this or how we're going to do that. And said, the first thing is you go to God and say, God, give me the blueprint for the day. Because not only did God give him the blueprint, He provided the tools. We're sitting here trying to build our life ourselves and trying to do this ourselves and, and trying to figure this out ourselves instead of doing what Paul did. See, this Paul knew that. So when he repented, God gave him the blueprint. God can't give blueprint if there's sin. Because light and oh my God. I said light and darkness cannot exist in the same house. That's why you ain't, that's why you're walking around powerless. Here again, I'm not saying you don't love God. I'm not challenging 
challenging your salvation and I'm not challenging your love. What I'm challenging is, is the word that is in you. Amen. And so the Lord told me, he took me back to Noah. And he said, I mean, begin to take it through the scriptures. I begin to break it down and, and dissect it and read it and dissect it. And all of a sudden, I got to the verses where the, the Lord told Noah, get on the boat. He says, you're done now. He says, you're done now. He says, get on the boat. I'm going to take you the rest of the way. How many are ready for a day? The Lord says, okay, you're done now. Huh? I believe this happens to us every day. No, 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 you don't hear what I said. I said this. See, he gives the blueprints in the morning. And when we finish the blueprints of our life for that day, he says, okay, for the rest of the day, he says, and now just get on the boat. <laughs> he says, just go on, just get on the boat. <laughs> and he says, and I'll shut the door so the enemy can't come. Oh, my God. Shit, I will shut up. He said, I, you just come on here and I'll shut the door so the enemy can't get to you. He said, and I'll break the rain. See, you don't understand something. We're needing the rain, honey. We're needing the rain. Rain purifies. Rain cleanses. And we're getting ready to step into a realm, uh, in, in, in a realm of the Spirit where the rain is about to fall. Not just the former rain, but also the latter rain, which is the Shekinah glory that's going to roll in. So he began to share with me. He said, share this with kingdom. And so I'm sharing this with you this morning. Because, see, we're in 17. And see, just like a lot of times, you know, things don't seem right. And he told me, he said, look, he said, the first few months, not one month, not two months, just the first few months, he said, it's going to look like chaos. And, and, and people are going to come against you. And I'm sure some of you have experienced that because he wouldn't tell me to tell you if he hadn't. Been kind of rough, kind of, kind of shaky a little bit the first part of the year. But now, <laughs> he said, now is the time. We're stepping into a favor, a season of favor. <laughs> and as we step into a season of favor, we're going to walk in extreme yes. favor. Yes. Yes. Because see, what you don't know is when the Lord shut the boat, the door, <laughs> and the rain began to fall, it was on the 17th day <laughs> of the seventh month. Last time I checked, Pastor, I, I, I calculated. I calculated when you're going to be in that building. <laughs> if my calculations are correct, it's going to be on the seventh month. That, oh, my God. And God, and when you walk in, he, listen, he's going to allow the rain to begin to fall right like now. See, he said this, and you study in Greek, the word 17 means this. It says complete victory and overcoming yeah. the enemy. Yeah. See, we're, we're, we're just, a, now you see why I'm here. I see why I'm here today, Pastor. You know, I've been sensing it in my spirit, and I, and I had a few few visions and, and a few dreams about the services, but now I'm seeing it. I see your faces, and God wants to do something in your life, and now is the time. Oh, my God. So then he brought the rain, and of course, you know, the rain represented purification and cleansing, and, and it wiped out sin. Yeah. And you know when sin's wiped out, God can move. Yeah. I mean, here I said, when God, when sin is wiped out of your life, that's when God can move. Yeah. Amen. So you see, that's why we got in order to live in the now. Which I mean, we're not just great the surface. I ain't even got into it. But when we understand living in the now, that now you can see because that's why we have to walk in true repentance, and so that Satan won't take advantage of us, and so that not we, so we'll have authority over him, and in every place our feet tread is our territory. Yes, yes. Now watch this. Watch this. As the rain ascended and the cloud broke and the waters began to descend. The Bible says that the ark settled on the mountains of Aaron. 
And when it settled on the mountains of area, it settled on the 17th day of the third month. Now watch this, watch this. But you don't realize that on the 17th day of the third month is the Feast of Tabernacle. And so you're like, okay, Feast of Tabernacle, great. No, 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 what you don't understand. Feast of Tabernacle means total forgiveness. Huh? Every year with the seven, every single year, they, back in, in Jewish times, they would forgive debt. They would give land. If you didn't have any land, they would give you land so you could grow crop. They would provide all the <laughs> feasts of tabernacle. So God showed me like this, and, and you should get this because you live in the South. I, when I change this up north, I have to change it a little bit because they don't understand. <laughs> they don't have a clue sometimes but because <laughs> they're Northerners, Yankees, and that's okay. I love them. <laughs> but the Lord showed me like this. He said, he said tell them it's like being in gold crowd. He said, have you ever been to Golden Prime these buses show up? Man, I travel all over the country. So when I, you, you, I mean, people that travel all the time they, they, and they do tours and everything, the Golden Crow is the place to go. <laughs> and so they, you know, and they come in by the bus loads. And, and, about, and the Lord said this, He told them, He said, don't be like some of them folk don't get off the bus. Because some of them don't want to go in the Golden Crow, so they just sit on the bus. And yet, what they don't understand is it's a feast laid out. But until they get in, see, what you don't understand, when they do those tours, the bill's already paid. That was all inclusive. When they tour, it's all inclusive. So when they pull up the gold crown, if they choose not to get off the bus, it's their fault. It's like Christians coming to church. The Lord this morning has laid out a buffet. Healing, prosperity, forgiveness, righteousness, a mercy. Great, oh, come on, somebody. But until you get off the bus and partake, it's already been paid for. It's part of the package. So this year now, 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 everybody say now. now. <laughs> we're going to walk in. Amen. I said, we're going to step in. <laughs> it's already started. Some of you got, I see light bulbs going off. Some of you, it's already started. You already got some revelation of how to change some things, how to turn some things around. And But if we will complete it tonight. I said, well, it's going to be complete tonight. So every head bowed, every eye closed right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing and power of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we know you're our Redeemer. We know you live. You know you, we, you forgive us of all our sins. But if you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know I don't need to be living and doing, living and doing the things that I need to be doing. I know I need to turn some things around. Or you may say, Preacher, I've I received Jesus at one time, but I'm not living I'm not living right. There's some things in my heart that ain't right, and I know I need to get it right. I, I want the fullness of God. I want to walk in that same authority, that same anointing that Jesus did. I want to have that power to even walk on water. Wow. If that's you this morning, I'm getting ready to pray. If you want me to include this prayer, if that's you this morning, I'm going to pray that your hand real quick. Yes, I see the hand. Someone else? Yes, the hand. I see the hand. Come on, let's get it right. You know some things in your life. Yeah, let's get it right. Come on. I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Someone else. Come on. Now, those that lift your hand, I put myself on this altar first. Now, I want you to come and join me right now all across this altar. Come on. The anointing is right here. Come on. Break loose right here this morning. Oh, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Shekhet and Abel Look at this. Look at this, man. Revival is about to break. <laughs> I said revival is about to break, not just in, your, not in the church, but in your life. Now, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. Everybody repeat this prayer. Let me say, Heavenly Father, Father, I thank you, I thank you for, being a God for being a God of many chances. Of many chances. I, repent I repent right now. Right now. Devil, Devil, you hear me? You, hear me. you have no more right no more and no more authority, no more authority over, my life. 
over my life from this day forth. Because Jesus has forgiven me and has redeemed me from this day forth. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of all my sins. Because I know. I just feel like you got a, a worship song. Oh my, my, I'm getting ready to close. Because we got to come back to tonight. But I'm telling you, God, the Holy Ghost, listen, all day long, all day long, all day long, the Holy Ghost is going to be doing something. Amen. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will be doing something in your house. The Holy Ghost will be doing something in your finances. The Holy Ghost will be doing something in your bodies. Even, even this, oh my, yes, Holy Ghost, addiction. Some of you have been fighting addiction. Oh, I saw that. That addiction will be gone in Jesus' name. I said it will be gone in Jesus' name. By the time you leave here tonight, I completely wrong. To you. Oh, come on, let's worship you.
you would see the glory of the Holy Ghost move in a mighty way. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you guys so much. I'm already in love with you. Love you guys. Pastor. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Hallelujah. Glory. Let me see. Go ahead. If you can. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, this this morning has challenged me, and I hope it's challenged you. I heard some things this morning. I've heard it many times, but I never heard it that way. And I, I just appreciate the way I heard it, the way he said it, the way the Spirit let me hear it. Did anybody hear anything that you've heard before, but you heard it in a different perspective? Thank God for that this morning. Now, we also, we just, we're going to, uh, every Sunday morning we, we, we put money in the basket for wells. We got a well that we're paying, you know, we've been paying. Uh, we just send the money and there's a few, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars away, six, seven hundred dollars. We bought a well for kids to have clean water. So anyway, I put some in. See, I always sow myself, so nobody can sow well. That's, I'm sowing, but you don't ever sow. You don't know what I sow. I sow and sow and sow and sow to other sowed and to sow and is still sowing. <laughs> you ever done it? Hallelujah. Pray. Yeah, you pass around. That'd be great. Just pass around. If anybody's got a million dollars, put it in there. Hallelujah. Now, um, can we have a basket?